Hey folks, got another viewer requested video for you in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Noel slid into my Twitter DMs recently asking about how to prove that there is a surjection from the set of even numbers to the set of natural numbers. So we're going to go over how to do just that in today's lesson. Remember, to show that there is a surjection from, say, the evens to the naturals is to show that the cardinality of the even numbers, which we're calling E, is greater than or equal to the cardinality of the naturals. So there are at least as many even numbers as there are naturals. That seems like a pretty clear and obvious result, so it shouldn't be too hard to come up with a surjection. And that's exactly what we have to do, right? To, to show there is a surjection from the evens to the naturals, we need to cleverly come up with a function that we think is surjective, and then just prove it's surjective, and then we'll be done. So let's quickly recap our sets here. The even numbers we can define like this in set builder notation. All integers x, such that x is equal to 2k for some integer k. And the naturals we're saying is the set containing 1, 2, 3, and so on. So our set of natural numbers does not include 0. However, if you wanted it to, we could adjust our function pretty easily to account for that. But this is going to be our set of naturals for this lesson. OK, so all we have to do is come up with some cool function, say f, from the even numbers to the natural numbers and then show that f is surjective, which means we need to show that given any natural number, we can find some even number that our function f will map to the given natural number. So how could we come up with such, such a function? Well, we, we've just got to think. A quick look at our, at our domain, the even numbers, tells us that certainly the identity function isn't going to work, right? We can't define our function f as f of x equals x and be home free, this isn't going to hit all the natural numbers. It's just going to hit a bunch of even numbers. So that's not going to do. But if we look a little closer at our domain, we see you know, we have all the even numbers, which are defined like this, numbers that are equal to 2 times k for some integer k. So if we just took a factor of 2 out of all of our even domain elements, we'd just be left with all of the integers. And so then maybe we're on to something. Perhaps we can define our function. Given a, an input value of x, we'll say that f of x is equal to x over 2. Then if we want to get the first natural number, 1, we could just plug in a value of 2, right? And then what would we get? We'd get 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. If we wanted to get the natural number 2, we could plug in 2 times 2, which is 4. And then f of 4, that's going to be equal to 4 over 2, which is 2. What, let's do one more. What if we wanted to get the natural number 13? Well, we could plug in 2 times 13, which is 26, f of 26. Our function just takes out that factor of 2, which is going to give us back the number we want, 13 in this case. So OK, this seems like a pretty good start. Is this going to work? Well, this function f defined like this will almost work. We can hit every natural number with this function. The problem is the naturals, that's our codomain. So we can't go outside of the codomain, but this function will. If we plug in a negative even number, like negative 6, for example, f of negative 6, that's going to be equal to negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. That's not a natural number. That's not in our codomain, so that's not going to fly. Also, if we plugged in the number 0, f of 0 is equal to 0 over 2, which is 0. That's also not in the naturals. So it seems like just with the positive even numbers, we're going to be able to hit all of the naturals just like we want. However, the other even numbers, 0 and all the negative ones, we need to redirect those into our codomain, the naturals, because right now, given our function, 0 will be mapped to 0. That's not in the naturals. And negatives will be mapped to negatives. Those aren't in the naturals. So we need to redirect them all into the naturals, which we can easily do by defining our function in a piecewise manner. So here's what we can say. We'll say our function f, if you plug in x, what are we going to get? We'll define it piecewise. So we'll say 
if we plug in a positive x value, those are the ones that work just fine. And remember, all of these are even numbers because that's our domain, all of the even numbers. If x is positive, greater than zero, then we can spit out x over two. That'll be our function's output. However, if our even number x is less than or equal to zero, that's the only other possibility, then what do we want? Well, we're pretty sure we can hit all the naturals with just this, x over two for positive even numbers x. So it doesn't really matter where x goes when it's less than or equal to zero, as long as it goes to the naturals. So let's just map it to one. You could map it to whatever you want, as long as it's in the naturals. All right, now we just have to prove that this uh, function of prophecy is, is a surjection, and then we'll be done. So to prove that, we just need to take any arbitrary natural number and show that there is an element in our domain that our function will map to that natural number. So this is, this is the proof part. You know, we've come up with our function, now we just prove it is surjective. So we'll take an arbitrary natural number. Let little m be an element of the naturals. How are we going to get our function to map to that natural number n? Well, remember the examples we went over before. We just want to double n, add in a factor of two, and then our function is going to take that factor of two out and give us back that natural number. So you might want to jump straight to that step. You might want to say, hey, look, f of two times n is going to spit out n, and bada bing, bada boom, we're done. That's the proof. But there's a couple other things we have to address. First, before we plug 2n into our function, we need to make sure that 2n is actually in our domain, the even numbers. Otherwise, we can't plug it into our function. Next, in order to actually know how our function is going to behave at 2n, we need to demonstrate where 2n is. Is it less than or equal to zero? So it'll fall here. Or is it greater than zero? And so our function will behave this way. That's what we have to address. And thankfully, both of those things we could take care of really quick. Firstly, notice that 2 times n, and, and remember we're talking about 2 times n because this is what we want to plug into our function. This is what's going to give us the output we want. But again, before we plug it into the function, we need to show that it's in the domain, and since we've defined our function in a piecewise manner, we want to know what part of our domain it is. So 2 times n, we just want to point out this is clearly an element of our domain. It's clearly an even number by definition. It's 2 times some natural number, which is an integer. So it's 2 times some integer, it's an even number. Then, n is a natural number. Every natural number is positive, since our natural numbers don't include 0. So since we're just multiplying it by 2, 2 times n is certainly going to be positive as well. 2 times n is greater than 0. So it's in our domain, so we can plug it into the function. It's greater than zero, so when we do plug it into our function, our function is going to behave like that. So then just like that, we can plug it in and point out. What have we got? f of 2n. You give me this natural number n, I say plug 2n into the function. What's going to happen? The function is going to spit out 2n divided by 2, which is equal to n. Bam. Thus, there exists a surjection from the set of even numbers to the set of natural numbers. And here f is just such a function. So just to reiterate one more time what we did to show there is a surjection from the evens to the naturals, we just did some thinking, come up with this function that we think is a surjection, and then prove that it is a surjection. Meaning we showed that given any natural number, any number in the codomain, we can find an element in our domain that our function will map to that given codomain element. For example, you give me 7 in the natural numbers, I can say plug in 14 into our function, that's going to spit out 7. So there is a surjection from the evens to the naturals. The, this function covers the naturals. It's going to hit every single natural number. So of course, there must be as many or more evens than there are natural numbers. Now, to prove that their cardinalities are precisely the same, you would need to show that there's also an injective function from the evens to the naturals. Is this function injective? No, it's not. So this one wouldn't do, because of course, uh, for a function to be injective, any two distinct domain elements 
need to be mapped to distinct codomain elements. In this case, a bunch of domain elements are getting mapped to the same number, one. So it's not injective. But there is an injection. The cardinality of the evens and the naturals, they are the same. So there is an injective function. This is not it. So I certainly welcome you to come up with one. Let me know what you think down in the comments. But I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that there is a surjection from the evens to the naturals, and hopefully you find that useful for other similar exercises. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. It's so hot here in the northeastern United States. And uh, be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And tastemakers make us no chaser Gets the blood flowing like a fucking pacemaker Cut the middle man and inhale the vapors Mad men, uh, old ten dime drapers Cut the jukebox on, make the woofers blow We gon' sit here until all them heifers go Holler at the tens and